And one person who has so joyfully embraced this new relationship with the natural world is Risa. And Risa came here as a graduate student, and it was my good fortune to work with her as she did this wonderful project on Judaism and ecology. And she has taken those interests and those skills to wonderful places. So I'm just going to briefly go over some of um, Risa's story. She is indeed an ardent educator environmentalist, and as she says, urban homesteader. Uh, she completed her BA honors at Queen's in comparative religious studies and then came here to do her master's. Upon graduation, Risa moved to rural Connecticut where she worked as a Jewish environmental educator at the Teva Learning Center for three years. And if you go to Robart's library, third floor media commons, you can take out a documentary called Renewal and you will see a segment there on this learning center in Connecticut and it's a very inspiring segment. She then transitioned into small-scale organic farming as a member of the Adama Jewish Farming Fellowship, where she grew vegetables on a four-acre farm, worked in a raw goat milk dairy, and dabbled in the art of fermentation. And you once mentioned, uh, Risa, to one of my classes, how you went out west and you saw a free vegan meal offered at a United Church, if I'm remembering correctly. And having this and seeing the connection between faith and food said, I'm Jewish, this is what I should be doing. <laughs> this is amazing, and led to this remarkable journey. In 2008, Risa returned to her native Toronto to work as director of Shoresh and to establish the Kavanaugh Garden, bringing together her experience in outdoor education with her love for Canadian soil and the plants and people it sustains. In 2010, Risa was profiled as a woman to watch by Present Tense magazine. And in 2012, she was honored to be selected as a fellow in the prestigious Joshua Venture Group Dual Investment Fellowship. In 2013, shortly following the birth of her daughter, Ida, Risa was awarded the Covenant Foundation's Pomegranate Prize for Exceptionalism in Jewish Education. Risa believes that growing food sustainably is an expression of her deeply rooted Jewish ethics. And she adds, her spirit vegetable is the beet. So please welcome Risa Allison Cooper. Can everybody, does this work? It's a terrible noise. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I'm really honored to be here. So thank you for inviting me to speak this evening. I, um, I don't have slides, sorry about that. Um, but I'm going to speak to um, how the Jewish community is responding to the encyclical. Um, one of the passages in the encyclical that spoke to me profoundly um, was when Pope Francis wrote that we are not dealing with two separate crises, one environmental and the other social, but rather one complex crisis, which is both social and environmental. And I think part of the reason that this spoke so deeply to me is that right now within the Jewish calendar, we are in the, uh, the Shemitah year, the sabbatical year. Um, according to the, the Torah, the Hebrew Bible, um, in Sefer Shmot, in the book of Exodus, after revelation at Sinai, when the Israelites were given uh, the Ten Commandments, um, they were then given a, a set of moral codes to live by as they became a people and were preparing to enter into the land of Israel. And a big piece of this moral code that the Israelites were given at Sinai was that after six years, actually I'll just read it, um, it's says in Sefer Shmot in the book of Exodus, for six years you are to sow your land and to gather in its produce, but in the seventh you are to let it go and to let it be, that the needy of your people may eat, and what remains the wildlife of the field shall eat. Do thus with your vineyard and with your olive grove. From this passage and from others in the Torah, from um, the book of Dvarim, of Deuteronomy, and Vayikra, of Leviticus, we learn that during this Shemitah year, during the sabbatical year, the soil is not to be tilled or seeded, um, that land becomes hefker, it becomes ownerless, that food cannot be sold as a commodity in the, in the market, that all Israelites were to have equal access to shared food resources, uh, perennials, wild harvests. And we also learn that during the Shemitah year, 
all debts are forgiven and all indentured servants are released. So Shemitah is this radical rebalancing of Israelite society according to the Torah. It acknowledges that um, everything that, that Pope Francis is saying, that they're not separate crises, but rather there is one crisis, that the social, the economic, the agricultural, all of those different systems are interrelated, and we need to have checks and balances on our systems to make sure that we are creating a just and equitable society for all. And that's what Shemitah did. Every seven years, the playing field was leveled. Everyone had equal access to the community's resources. And that is a powerful, radical teaching. So right now within the Jewish environmental movement, the fact that that was um, a core piece of the encyclical and that we're in the Shemitah year right now is really powerful and really inspiring. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about um, Shemitah, as it's described in the Torah, is that um, we're told in, in Sefer Vayikra, in the book of Leviticus, um, don't worry, have faith. If you uh, hold to my mitzvot, to my commandments, I will make sure that in the seventh year, while you are holding the values of Shemitah, that you have food, and I will make sure that um, the following year that you have food as well, I will sustain you if you hold to my mitzvot. And then we're also told if you don't, if you do not hold to these commandments, if you do not honor the Shemitah and all of its different mitzvot, all of its different pieces, that you will be punished, the Israelites will be punished sevenfold. And seven in the Jewish tradition is a very powerful number. It's a complete number. We have the seven days that it took to create the world, the seven years of the Shemitah cycle. We actually have seven years of seven. Um, and in the 50th year, we have Jubilee or Yovel, which is uh, an even more radical rebalancing and restructuring of ancient Israelite society. And now we're told that if we don't hold to these mitzvot, these commandments, that the punishment will be sevenfold, which we're to understand is a really big punishment. This is as complete a punishment as the Israelites can receive. Um, Rabbi Arthur Waskow, who's the director of the Shalom Center um, based in Philadelphia, uh, leading up to the encyclical, he, along with six or seven um, of his colleagues, released a letter called To the Jewish People, to All Communities of Spirit, and to the World, a Rabbinic Letter on Climate Crisis. Um, and that letter has since been signed by over 370 rabbis in North America. Um, and in this letter, um, he talks a lot about within the Jewish tradition, we know that there is a deep relationship between humans and the earth. Uh, the word for earth, it, or the word for the first human being is Adam, and the word for earth is Adama. Um, and Hebrew language is, is very intentional, and when something has the same shorash, the same root, we know that there is a deep and powerful connection. So Adam, Adama, we know that there is a deep connection between humans and the natural world and the earth. Um, and one of the things that Rabbi Ars uh, Arthur Wasco talks about in this uh, rabbinic letter on climate crisis is that he sees what we're experiencing now in terms of climate change as a fulfillment of the, the punishment that we're promised in the Torah, that if we don't honor Shemitah, if we don't honor this rebalancing, that we will receive a sevenfold punishment. We're actually told also in the book of um, Deuteronomy that explicitly if we don't hold to Shemitah, the land will vomit us out. That's very graphic language. Um, and Wasco says that that's essentially what we are seeing now. So um, I guess that's pretty much what's happening within in the Jewish community, that to see Pope Francis talking about a full value system approach to dealing with climate change to, and to hear that in the Shemitah year is incredibly powerful, it's incredibly inspiring, and it's definitely doing a lot to mobilize community members within the Jewish community. Um, this coming October, we're told um, that after the Shemitah year, um, during Sukkot, which is um, the, the third and final harvest festival, which will be the first time that the Israelites were to gather um, after the Shemitah year uh, finished, we're supposed to have what's called um, Hakhel, which is... Um, a basic communal gathering where we revisit the, the laws of Shemitah and we recommit to them. We basically sign up that, okay, we're entering another 
we're starting at the beginning of another series of seven years, and we are committing to holding these values. Um, and so it's really exciting that the um, meeting in Paris is going to be happening immediately before this gathering where the Jewish community is going to be recommitting to hold to uh, a, a full value system that brings together the social, the economic, and the agricultural. So thank you.